Calling All Explorers is a podcast from the Harvard Innovation Laboratory in Boston. Your hosts are Harvard Business School alumnus Ronald Terrazas and me, Harvard junior Jessica Pizzolides. Along with Dr. Gordon Chu, we are co-founders of iLab member Fingra, a for-profit public benefit corporation dedicated to discovery, development and commercialization of materials that can transform humanity's ideas of sustainability and ecology. Dr. Chu is our regular guest. He is a globally recognized scientist who is author or co-author of 41 international patents, many dealing with the wonder material graphene. He is a distinguished alumnus of Harvard Business Analytics Program and of Wharton's Advanced Management Program. Hi, Dr. Chu. Hi, Jesse. Um, what would we like to speak about today then? Well, um, I think we should, uh, calling all explorers, so we're going to continue to explore. Mm -hmm. um, we left off last time uh, talking about water bears. Um, yes. And, and um, you know, I used to pronounce the word uh, tardigrade as tardigrade because I didn't know. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And the, the word, the words don't have much meaning until you keep exploring. But the mm -hmm. water bear is important because it allows us to um, go into looking at a this this animal this creature that is a micro animal that can survive high temperatures and pressures which then could lead us to understanding more about life extension mm -hmm. outside of um of normal conditions under extreme conditions so that so just to wrap that part up as an explore mindset allows you to explore different conditions from the uranium to the to the water bear so imagine if we use this explore mindset and practicing because this this whole podcast is about getting others to learn how to explore imagine if we applied it to a book um uh and and one of the titles i'm going to share with you is uh is called Un unfair advantage right and the unfair advantage was written by um entrepreneurs and um, and and people who invest as angels and venture capital, and the unfair advantage: how you already have what it takes to succeed, um, by Ash Ali and Hassan Kuba. So I'm going to um, take their framework, uh, their acronym, which is called Miles, and how mm -hmm. far you can go. And we're going to start off with the letter M. Right. So what is the letter M in their book? The letter M in their book is M stands for money. Okay. Hmm. And what would you what would you change this part to, or how would you explain why money money starts off this acronym? Well, um, you know they they are uh entrepreneur you know entrepreneurs uh, that, that are focused sense. on right on on money. So that 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 means that they should they should do what they do. And I'm an entrepreneur, so I I know that money is important and for money, um, but I'm also an explorer. And money, the problem with money uh, is that is that it doesn't give me uh, enough of a magnet. I'll use M, another M word, magnet, to drive me to something further. Like the Jack Ma example we did last time. Yes. Jack Ma, manager of a thousand workers at Apple Manufacturing, first has made his mom proud of him. So that's another M word. And then he's uh, now made money. Of course, he's making money more than being a worker. So he, he's he's checked the box money right yeah. right so so but then if you compare it to alibaba the founder same uh, jack ma same name but founder of alibaba had he's a billionaire so he's got even more money but then if we go to um, uh, a restaurant or somewhere and how many meals you can eat per day money doesn't allow you to eat more meals <laughs> you know it may change the quality of the meal but at some point mm. it doesn't have the impact anymore diminishing marginal returns ah so spoken like a true <laughs> you know of economics and math <laughs> right of applied yeah. math so if we apply this to exploration as a mindset could you imagine using money to drive an explorer explorer meaning an innovator and in many companies we talked about last time need innovation right yeah, I guess that, no, there's that right. inherent conflict, right, between, you know, boosting profits versus kind of long-term exploration. Um, yeah, but then the argument against long-term exploration would be, what if these people don't find anything, <laughs> right? And then, and then why, well, so why are you arguing that we won't find anything? 
oh, because of the common denominator of money, what, how do you justify paying explorers who don't find anything? So let's cut off all the explorers and then let's just go and just re, re keep doing what we're doing. And then suddenly without innovation, then you might like, what happens if the people we make it and the, and the, and the, and the consumer stops coming. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Then you know what we do is we go back to money. We will discount the product. Right. So instead of 50, per, instead of, instead of full price, it's 50% off. You got to go and buy it. It's 50% off. Yeah. Right. And then, and then you do that, right? You run the model and then, and then you can only keep it at 50% off for so long because the next thing you have to do is it's now 75% off, <laughs> right? Right. And, and then, so and on. then, right. But then, but then if we throw it away, it'll cost us our money in order to get rid of the item because it's now called garbage, right? So you have to go and, and get rid of it. Uh, and it even costs money to recycle. So what we want to do is we want to do it 90% off. Can you please take this off of our thing? And so money as a common denominator, it's so true, but has its limits. Um, limits is another topic you talk about in math, right? Limits. Of course, yes. Yeah. yeah. So when you derivatize and you take the derivative, the L'Hopital, right? You take the derivative and you then find out that there is still, there, there's, you can still keep going. And then otherwise some functions you can't. So, so you see that there are limits to money as your M. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and what would you then propose? Um, whether it's, you know, merit or mindset or what, what would your M be? See if I'm if I if my M was marriage that would be terrible right because yeah, that doesn't, I, right? <laughs> merit yeah. rather yeah. yeah 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 and 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 merit right you know so but marriage I I purposely played on that is that is that like marriage people would say no that doesn't work because some people get married and it's not good and other people get married for money right and other people get married for sex and other people get married so it's not married or marriage right my M is meaning nice yeah meaning. Right. So what, meaning, what is purpose? Yeah. So we need to have greater meaning. We need to find our meaning behind the exploration exercise. So that if you're a musician, singing other people's cover songs, developing your voice so it sounds so amazing. Yeah. Does that work if you're trying to get meaning as someone in music? It might be very difficult to compare that against. Let me write some lyrics and let me then sing my own songs. Um, and then if I'm successful or if people like it, then I've created a very different path, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. But no, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I think in the pursuit of success and entrepreneurship, having meaning that is not misguided, not up in the clouds, but, you know, actually grounded and really aligned with reasonable purpose can drive success even more, um, even more than, than just monetary gain. Yeah. 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 And then, and then the, the, um, the, the whole thing about the acronym miles, um, you know, so that we, we, we talk a little bit about that is miles actually stands for um, distance traveled, right? So, yeah. So when we do another of these recordings, we'll go through these different letters, but but miles distance traveled from an exploratory standpoint, going a large distance, your greatest fear is what if I went 50 miles east and I went 50 miles west and that I end up with zero displacement. I actually ended up going nowhere. Yeah. Right? No, so exactly. As an, right, as an explorer, the, the, it's not just about how far you've gone, but actually have you gotten somewhere? Mm -hmm. And then as an explorer, it's not just getting somewhere, but getting to the end of your rainbow. Because if you end up somewhere, which is seemingly more than nowhere, that somewhere, if it's not the right where, right? If it's, it's the, not the correct where of the, at the end of your rainbow, then you have ended up in a place that, you do not want to end up with. Up Absolutely. Here. And, it, and yeah. it's such an important distinction, I think, you know, this distance versus displacement um, in terms of 
chasing any goal really like having these like little um little kind of incremental measures of success and progress and growth um to ensure that you haven't just traveled you know 10 kilometers but ended up you know at your starting point but traveled that you know 10 kilometers and you are ending up 10 k km farther from where you started hopefully in the right direction in the positive trend but um yeah i agree it's a really important distinction yeah and if we take um distance and displacement miles in that context into business how many business operations have lots of revenue but very very thin profits or almost no they're not profitable but they just have lots of revenue hmm. yeah yeah right i, I guess i guess that's where you know that that concept of kind of red like relative value comes in so crucially yeah. in in all in all realms whether it's you know accounting valuation science personal growth entrepreneurship <laughs> right so so in order for us to really appreciate miles as the acronym which wasn't created by me it was in the book and then why my M wouldn't be money as an explorer, it would be meaning. Well, if you think about displacement, it's not only about in a building business. Some businesses are profitable um, and they have great margins and even the revenue it, that you don't have to do a lot of revenue to get profits. But the, but the end point is that it displaces others. So, or it creates societal ills. So... Mm -hmm gambling or, 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 or cigarettes or things like that. It might be, you might think about, you know, is that, is that, is that um, only for shareholders or is it also inclusive of stakeholders? Societal good. Yeah. Right. So now, nowadays um, we start to have social governance and we think a lot about that. So, so from an explorer mindset, we're exploring, that's what we're doing on these podcasts right? Calling all explorers is the call from within, right? Um, do we just want distance or do we, do we need to be aware of displacement? Also who we're displacing, what we're displacing and um, are they aligned with not, see, I don't want to be aligned with my goals because I don't know my goals. I mean, if my goal, if, if the end point hasn't been invented, like what do you want to do when you grow up? Well, you could answer it hasn't been invented yet. Mm -hmm. That would be very true for AI pe people who are working in AI. Right? Things weren't invented twenty years ago. How would how am I supposed to answer your question? But if I ask the question, is how do you want to feel when you grow older, when you are older? Well, no one's going to say I want to feel terrible. Right? <laughs> yeah. I want to be in pain. I don't want to <laughs> have time for my family. Right. You don't you don't choose those options. So you then choose those opposites, and you say, "Well, then, then does does this fit? And does this fit how I want to feel as I'm getting older?" Absolutely. Yeah. And I guess that's a great pivot into the eye of Miles. Um, what does the book propose that the eye should be, and where does Doctor Chu think it should be? <laughs> okay, so that's incredible. I mean. We have only about uh, a few minutes left and we're going to be daring to choose I, huh? Okay, all right. So in the I in the book, so now that saves you guys from buying the book, but of course, if you buy the book, you get other things. I, I in the book of The Unfair Advantage talks about intelligence and insight. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and I can also stand for the pronoun uh, to uh, monetize yourself, which is um, allowing yourself to be exploited, right? So- you know the kind of eye where you know you, you have the person providing the smartest answer in the room, um, whether you're in middle school, high school, someone always is the smartest, right? Or they answer the most questions. Um, and then you grade them based on their, their score. And then you determine who's number one. You see that in competitions all the time. Now, as an explorer, if there are 100 people competing and there's only one number one, from an explorer mindset, you just lost all another 99 because those other 99 that now know you're number one might not tell you things that they would have told you had you not been number one. Mm. It might be a lonely path, path right? So yeah. what is the secret ingredient to um, getting more um, possibilities, right? We talk you know, possibilities, chances, right? It's not to focus on intelligence and 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 insight only. Like I like those, but in order to truly level up as an explorer, 
um, you usually are not the most intelligent and insightful. So for example, here's an exercise. I want you to give me your dumbest answer. I want you to not think about this and I'll, st I'll get started. I want to do something for climate change. And what we want to do is we want to invent a way so that when people um, go to the bathroom, because going to the bathroom is actually not good for the climate, and we want to reduce the plant footprint of people. So here's a stupid, crazy, silly answer is imagine if we could change how often people poop. So instead of going once a day or twice a day, we, we actually change it so that they go once a month. Imagine if we did that for cows, right? Right. And, and uh, you know, and then so now 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 we're exploring. We're exploring. Now that was not intelligent or insightful, right? Mm -hmm. That was just silly. Right? So I for interaction is encourage interaction, right? So that we can yeah. then drive innovation. No, absolutely. And I think in you know, innovation is a team sport. Um yeah. that's why I think that's why diversity is so you know, sought after nowadays. Um, you know, I study, I do a maths degree and it's a really kind of international group of kids that kind of come together and share their perspectives. You know, maths is such a language. Um, and, you know, whether it's, you know, like, you know, the French thinking the zero is a natural number or like, you know, the Brits learning certain ways to prove things. Like, I think having these discussions and, you know, being able to interact, get out all these silly ideas first, and um, that's the only way real progress um, is made. Uh, yeah. So speaking of math, Jesse, right? So people are very enamored in the um, in the entrepreneur and investment world of 10x, right? 10 times the return. And mm -hmm. if you look at y equals x as a function, right? F of x is, you know, that function and it's it's just linear, y equals x, 10 is a very impressive number, 10x. But if you suddenly change it from a monomial to the polynomial, like X to the fifth or something, right? Sure. You know, it only takes the number two, like, yeah, the number one won't beat 10, but two already can beat 10 X 10 times very easily because two, right? To the fifth power, right? That's much more than 10, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so then, then you look at, um, you know, the, the, um, um, and if people want the answer, you know, to the fifth, right? You know that that's 32. So, so it's like 32. So we can get, so what are those um, exponential um, impacts of being innovative? Bruce Lee's one inch punch, right? Caught the world by surprise because he, he did the one inch punch. Maybe someone did the two inch punch, but he did the one inch punch. Moderna caught the world by surprise because they were focused on mRNA technology, but then there was this moments with covid and that drove you know the 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 innovation to become noticed right but they had to first be innovative otherwise they would when the time came um there wouldn't be that valuation jump right so so sometimes these polynomial equations show up in t inside your life now an opposite example would be brand building without encouraging innovation mm -hmm. well, what would happen what happens is then, you know, if the item isn't selling, right, just because we we built it, the buyers stopped coming. So what would we have to do? We would apply some very non-innovative model because we're not changing the formula. We're not changing the item. Instead, we discount. I see. Right? So 30% off, 50% off, 75% off. Yeah, full oh, circle. <laughs> right. And then so you're now taking the existing audience that likes your product and they end up buying, well, they end up having a treat because now it's 75% off. So they buy all that they can buy, but now they have many of those items. And then when you give it to 90% off, right? Now they're going to wait. Like the more you keep doing this, the more they're going to wait for your next discount. And that's how you destroy. Uh, many uh, box retails and things like that have vaporized. They don't even exist. Circuit City to other ones in the United States, uh, Toys R Us. It's, um, you know, Bed Bath & Beyond was another one more recently. You start seeing that discounting leads to, um, it's not an innovative approach, right? <laughs> no, yeah. but it's, it's, it's at the core of 
so much. I mean, we humans, we, you know, we're kind of finite beings and an infinite string of time. And so much of our, you know, assigning value to things is about discounting to the present, um, kind of coming up with appropriate rates to be able to appreciate ideas, goods, services that, you know, will be a benefit or, um, you know, yeah, a benefit to us, you know, down the line. What is that, you know, a value to us today? So I think that's where um, this concept of discounting comes in really important, yeah. especially in exploration. Right. So if, as an explorer, these are your two uh, letters as part of the MILES acronym of M for meaning and I for innovation. Amazing. And next time we'll hear the LES. <laughs> All right. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Dr. Chu. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you for listening to another episode of Calling All Explorers. To find out more, please visit fingra.com. That is P-H-E-N-E-G-R-A dot com. Thank you.